Hey everybody, welcome back to Breaking Audio. I am Adam Claremont for BreakingAudio.com and AdamClaremont.com. Today, I want to talk about importing an AAF file into Pro Tools. And just so you know, I haven't done this in at least 10 years, maybe longer. It's usually an OMF file, but let's figure out if I can actually do this or not together. So we'll see. So if you like videos, just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Every week we're releasing them. Um, it's just like this. Pro Tools tips, Ableton tips, just how to be a better engineer working in the studio. So please, uh, it would mean the world to me. Hit the subscribe button, help us out. And uh, yeah, let's just dive in and see what happens here. Hey, so here we are. This is my 5.1 template. Uh, I am beginning a, a short film today. Uh, called The Vow, and I was delivered an AAF file, and I mean, really, it's no big deal. It's the same thing as an OMF, really, uh, and it imports the same way. So I'm just going to show you how I'm about to do that so I can get started uh, on this project today. So first things first, I'm going to go to File, Import, Session Data. All right, and what I've done is I've got a folder where I um, just organize. I've got a file for all my video assets. As things change, I'll load all those video files in here. And I just like to create a file, or a folder for the files that were delivered to me from the client exactly as they were. So that's what this is. So this is that whole folder that I'll be importing. So I'm gonna grab the AAF right here, click open and see what we got here. So first thing I wanna check out is the source properties. This is going to tell me you know, it's an AF file. It's going to tell me where it starts in the timeline. So we're starting at an hour. Uh, the time code format, which is very important. So I'll probably need to change this in Pro Tools to uh, 24 frames per second. The bit depth is good to know. The sample rate is also good to know. The types of files and the video frame rate, like I mentioned, good to know. So that all looks cool to me. And then let's check out some of the other options we have here. So under media options, we're going to look at our audio and our video media options. So if you hit this uh, drop down menu, we've got four options. Uh, I'll just go over these and tell you what I'm going to use. So we have link to source media where possible. So what this would do is instead of copying all the data into your project, you're going to tell the project file to locate the source media wherever it lives and just use that data from the, the location where it already lives. Uh, copying the source media it takes all of the media wherever it lives and puts into the new audio files folder the Pro Tools automatically generates for every Pro Tools project session. Consolidate from source media. Same thing as copy from source media, except that, and this is very important to know the difference, Consolidate will literally not copy any files that aren't currently used in the project. So maybe alternate takes or other takes uh, in your film or any audio that was used and since removed. It doesn't mean that you won't need it. It just means it's not in the project, but by consolidating it, it means it's not going to be available to you. So important to know that. Uh, and then force to target session format. When you copy it, basically you're going to take whatever, you know, if this is at 44.1 and your session's at 48, it's going to turn it to 48, okay? So for me, I just showed you that I made that folder with all of my client files. So it's already in my project folder. I'm just going to use link to source media because it's right there. I don't need to copy it again. So I'm going to use link to source media. Video media options, you have two options here. Link to source media or copy from source media. Once again, I'm just going to link because I created a video files folder. It's already in my project, so I'm going to link. Time code mapping options. We have three options. Maintain absolute time code values, meaning if this starts at one hour, it's going to start at one hour in my session when I import it. Simple. Makes sense. Maintain relative time code values. If this starts at one hour and all subsequent audio files start wherever they start, the relative timeline will stay intact, but it will begin wherever my session begins. And currently my session begins at zero. Okay, so if I were to choose this, Everything would start at zero, and then it would all fall in line just as it was uh, as it's supposed to play. Okay? Map start time code to, if I click it, it makes more sense, and to whatever you say. So this is kind of like maintain the relative, but instead of it starting at the beginning of my session, I'm going to say, let's say, start at five hours. 
So now it will start at five hours instead of one hour. And then after five hours, it will all, you know, fall in line the way it was. And then the last thing here is track offset. So what I could do is I could start it at five hours, but I'm going to offset it by five minutes. This is useful maybe for like conforms. If there's an edit and you've got some files coming in, you can sort of conform them back into your session. I don't want to touch it today. That gets crazy. I'm going to stick with absolute. So we'll stick with the start time beginning at one hour. Makes sense to me. Um, another thing we're going to look at here, sample rate conversion options if we are copying. And there is a different sample rate from the source properties, the source data, and your current session, like let's say my session's at 98, then I would hit this and we would change all the data coming in would be converted from 48 to 96, okay? So I don't need to do that today. Uh, here, I want everything selected as a new track. I could, you know, I could send the, these things to, you know, my current template. I'm not going to do that. Um, maybe that's for another video why I won't do that. Uh, session data to import. I'm, I personally don't, like to take any of this stuff here and let's just check out everything here um, because it's a new track I'm just going to take everything here if I was bringing these onto my template I would be unchecking a lot of things because my template is created so that I'm already working the way that I want to begin to work and if I were to take this data and place the new tracks into these tracks then my template would be screwed up based on however the initial data was created in the initial session so it's kind of counterproductive so i'm gonna make a new track i'm still gonna take all this stuff so i can see it but it'll just be on a new track so let's just click ok see what we got that sounds fine to me and this is why we have coffee so while we wait oh look at that there's just a few files that's nice so anyway, there you have it. This is my film. Nicely done. I'm impressed. This looks really nicely edited and really simple for me to get started with. So, you know, from here, I'm just going to begin to put these down into my template and I will begin to get to work. So there you have it. I hope that was helpful. If you've ever received an AAF file and you've only ever worked with OMF files, fear not. You see how simple it was. It's literally the exact same process. Um, you know, I was gave you a little cliffhanger in the beginning. So if you stuck around, thanks. Uh, now you know. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. I'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, be notified for videos just like this every single week, usually more than once a week. We're doing videos about Ableton, Pro Tools, plugins, uh, you name it, you know, just fun stuff. And we're trying to keep them quick and helpful. So if you find them to be helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button, show the support. Don't forget breakingaudio.com, adamclaremont.com, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.